So the topic for today is urinary bladder. The urinary bladder also develops from the primitive rectum, which was called from the primitive rectum, from the cloaca. So, some animals have cloaca to the same opening they pass through, to the same opening they pass through. In humans also previously there is cloaca, which is connected to umbilicus. Cloaca is the Cloaca is the lowermost part of the hind leg. So this is cloaca, lowermost part of the hind leg. Connected to umbilicus by allantois. What is allantois? It connects hind leg to umbilicus. From this point develops a septum. Develops a septum. This septum is called as urorectal septum. Urorectal septum. This divides the cloaca into two parts, the primitive rectum. So this part is called as the rectum, from which the rectum and upper part of the anal canal develops. And this is called as the primitive urogenital signs. Primitive urogenital signs. Here is the opening of the mesonephric ducts. The mesonephric ducts open to here. Above this opening, above this opening, now the primitive urogenital sinus is further divided into Versaico urethral canal and definitive urogenital sinus and definitive urogenital sinus. So previously what was there? Loica. Loica got divided into by a urorectal septum, loica got divided by urorectal septum into primitive urogenital sinus anteriorly and rectum posterior. Primitive urogenital sinus got further divided into versaico urethral canal cranially and definitive urogenital sinus order. From this versaico urethral sinus develop the urinary bladder, of course I think they of the urinary bladder, muscle develop from the stand from the urinary bladder, and prostatic urethra, and prostatic urethra, from definitely urogenital sinus develop the remaining part of the urethra, develop the remaining part of the urethra. Okay, so what was this? Cloaca got divided by what septum? Right. So moment there is a septum, this septum may have some openings, holes, defects. So there will be rectovercycle tissue. Okay. Now this is the bladder, developing bladder. These are the mesonephric ducts opening into it. From these mesonephric ducts, Urethric part develops, right? Goes to the kidney. Now, what happens is this part of the mesonephric gets absorbed, gets absorbed in the wall of the bladder in such a way that urethric openings remain like this, and these openings go down. These openings go down. So previously there was only one opening of the visual Now there are two openings, 
One is of the mesometric duct and another is of the ureter. Ureteric opening remains above, mesometric duct opening goes below. This remains as ureteric opening and this becomes the opening of the ejaculatory duct. Ejaculatory duct, where the semen, because from the same ureter, semen and urine is going to come. So we need two openings, one opening for urine, another opening for the semen. Okay, so this opening shoots down and this part of the bladder, this part of the bladder between the openings is formed from this absorbed mesonectric ducts. So this part develops from mesoderm. This is called a trigone of bladder. The posterior wall of the bladder we see a smooth part which is called as trigone. Trigone develops from Trigon develops from absorbed mesonectric ducts. So whole endoderm of the bladder is, uh, sorry, whole epithelium of the bladder is from endoderm. Except for the epithelium in the trigon, which is from, which is from mesoderm. So this is about epithelium. Muscle of the bladder, dendrosa, develops from Plankton during Plankton during Middle Okay I know difficult to understand Last time again I am repeating This was Cloica Got divided by Duro rectal septum Into anterior part called as Primitive and posterior part, this got divided into cranial, vasoreferral urethral canal, caudal, definitely urethral canal. From vasoreferral urethral canal, there was urinary bladder, epithelium of the urinary bladder, and prostatic urethral epithelium. From definitely urethral canal, there develops the develops the urethra. This is developing bladder. What are these? Mesonectric ducts. This mesonectric ducts. There are two in number. From this goes the ureteric part. Now this part gets absorbed so that now still there are four openings. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ureteric openings remain on the top. Mesonectric openings go down. That's all. They got get converted to openings of ejaculatory ducts. This are the ureteric openings. This is called as what? Trigon of the bladder, where the epithelium is developed from? Remaining epithelium of the bladder is developed from? Developed from? And the muscle of the bladder, the is developed from? Yeah? Strength of the So is this clear? Bladder location in adults it is located in the pelvis. In small children it is still abdominal organ. What? Okay. So, so in children it is still to descend in adults. In adults it is in the pelvis. Also, when we talk about the location of the bladder, we say that when empty. When empty, it is in the pelvis. When full, even in adults, sir, when full, it is in the pelvis plus abdomen. So when the bladder becomes too full, the person can actually feel pressure over here. It becomes abdominal over here.
shape is tetrahedral when empty. When full, bladder is oval shape. How it becomes oval from tetrahedral? becomes like this. It is like this when empty and lateral surfaces are here, superior surfaces here. When it becomes full, it becomes like this. Anterolateral surfaces become, sorry, anterolateral, no, sorry, inferolateral. These are inferolateral surfaces. I am so sorry. Inferolateral surfaces become anterior. And superior surface will become posterior. Right? There is a posterior surface like this. Everybody is with me. So when empty, tetrahedral. There is inferolateral surface and superior surface. When full, inferolateral surfaces become anterior. And superior surface becomes posterior. When full, it goes into the abdomen. Urologists take advantage of this, they artificially make the bladder full and approach it through the abdomen. Okay. Is this clear? What is the capacity of the bladder? Full. At 220 ml, a person gets sensation of urine in the bladder. So if he is travelling in the bus, he will go and ask the driver, when is the next stop? So I will say, next stop, 15, 20 minutes. Why? No, 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 I just ask him. Then you come and sit down. So when such thing happens, you have to understand. 220 ml. 500 ml it becomes painful. So he doesn't go and ask the, where is the next stop. He goes and tells the driver, stop. Stop. Next stop or the question. Or if he is the same person, he will find that he has to say 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 that. When it becomes 1000 ml, the person next to him goes to the driver and says, why don't you stop? So either the bladder will burst or the person will lose control. Okay? Now let's see the morphology of the bladder. So we saw the shape, the capacity, now let's see the morphology. I am going to draw two diagrams. This is the side view and I am also going to draw inferior view. From inferior view, when we look at the bladder, from the inferior view, when we look at the bladder, the bladder looks like this. So bladder has an apex. One one line about each apex is connected to the umbilicals by median umbilical ligament. By median umbilical ligament. What is this median umbilical ligament? Remnant of allantos. See, we, we studied na, that it is connected to the umbilicals and that. Right? We say like that. Huh? Then bladder develops from here. So this part then disappears. Becomes a ligament. Doesn't disappear. Turns into ligament. We have drawn this diagram. Huh? Allen toys. So this Allen toys gets converted into median umbilical ligament. Connects the apex to the umbilical. So sometimes it remains patent. Umbilical fistula. Sinus. So, urine will come out from here. Every time it passes urine, some urine coming out of umbilicus. Why? Allen toys it remains patent. It got failed to get converted into median umbilical liver. Okay? Superior surface. Only surface of the bladder covered with peritone. See, understand. Here is anterior abdominal wall. The peritone will come like this. Go on the superior surface, go here on the base, go posterior. On 
this or this over time. So surgically now try to understand this. I, a neurologist puts water inside distilled water inside the bladder. Superior surface becomes posterior and interolateral surfaces become anterior. So they enter through the interolateral surfaces, so they don't touch the peritone. If I am doing a surgery, I don't want to touch the peritone. If I have to approach the bladder through superior surface, I have to cut the peritoneum, then the peritoneum may get infected and it can cause peritonitis. When I approach through the anterior lateral surfaces, inferior lateral surfaces which have become anterior, I am entering the bladder without entering the peritoneal cavity. Related to the points of sigmoid color, medium, all, all those points fall on this surface. Okay? Base. Base, what is the of base? See, the two ureters are coming like this. And the Eject. Sorry. Sorry. The ureters are like this. The ejaculatory duct they come and there are seminal vessels. I, I draw a posterior surface separating part. What is there at the base? These are ureteric openings. Okay? And what I have drawn next, crossing the ureteric opening from lateral to medial side is ductus ductus. Base is related to seminal vesicles. These are seminal vesicles. These seminal vesicles have their own duct that joins the ductus ductus and now it becomes ejaculatory duct. So when it is crossing, it is vas ductus, related to posterior surface of the bladder. On the posterior surface of bladder are, what are these two things? Seminal vesicles. See, this vas ductus will only contain sperms and some fluid from the prostate. So now fluid from the seminal vesicles is added to it. Now what it is called? Ejaculatory cup, which will open into the prostatic ureter. So these are structures related to the base of the bladder in case of males. What else will be there? The peritoneum coming from the superior surface will take here like this to form the rectovoscidal pouch. Rectum is here. Rectum is here. Peritone will form rectum was cycle pouch. In case of females, there will be uterus over here. So peritone on the superior surface will dip and go on the anterior surface of the uterus to form recto rectone was cycle uterine pouch. So utero was cycle pouch. So base here. Inferolateral surfaces, and I will draw one more diagram for this inferolateral surfaces. So, see how many diagrams we are drawing. So, these are the inferolateral surfaces. Okay. This is a bladder in coronal section. What is this surface? Superior so, surface. These are inferolateral surfaces. Inferolateral surfaces are migrated to the walls of the pelvis and from walls of the pelvis in the muscle. What is this muscle? What is this muscle? Obturator. What is this muscle? Levator and. So inferolateral surfaces are related to obturator internus and levator and. Obturator internus and here, anybody who is not understanding and wants me to repeat, 
Again, I am going to repeat all, all the things. Okay. Now the borders. Posterior border. Anterior lateral borders. Or lateral borders rather. Lateral borders. Lateral borders. And this.
sensory comes from the random nerve is to the space. Parasympathetic comes from nerve areas, which also comes from the space. Yes. Nerve areas is not talked about this parasympathetic. Sympathetic comes from the pelvic axis of the nerve. Applied to any of the bladder? Congenital abdominals. Sometimes the anterior abdominal wall fails to develop. And that, that is called as ectopic oocyte. I have seen a patient of ectopic oocyte actually in my life. So what happens is you directly see the posterior wall of the blood. It is exposed to the atmosphere. And you see the urinary openings and you see the urine coming out directly out of the body through the urinary openings. Ectopic oocyte. Why this has happened? Because the anterior abdominal wall has now developed. Because that has not developed, anterior portion of the bladder also doesn't develop. See, that portion in the inferior lateral surfaces, superior surfaces, they all develop, but they need the support of the anterior abdominal wall. When the lower anterior abdominal wall doesn't develop, this bladder only posterior wall develops. Ectopic oocyte. Investigation of the bladder is called cystoscopy, directly in scope is good. It is easier to cystoscopy in case of pain. Medical infection of the bladder is called as cystitis. 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 Commonly events. Okay. Very important, therefore, that female washrooms, the cleanliness has to be maintained. Rather, I tell the if a female and males are living together in a house. It's a duty of the male to always, whenever he is using the toilet pot for passing urine, he should sit down as he does in passing stool and pass urine. Otherwise, when the, he passes urine on the pot, it spins around, spoils the pot, and females, when they sit on it, there is a chance that they may get infected and very common, 4 cm long. What is 4 cm? This is 4 cm. Okay, so all and as per our very this thing, it's always better to pass whenever there is opportunity. It's so always it's difficult for it. Whenever there is opportunity, a man should also sit down and pass to it. That increases his lifespan. This is written in Ayurveda. Therefore, if you go to a village, you must be seen still in the interiors of village, means they sit down and pass away. Our grandfathers used to do that. Khede gawa mare tum bali tasa, come on sir. They have done good things, sir. Take that to put three sa adar karna, that's the end of our mother. And it increases the life. Those who remember this, it's, yeah, anything which increases life can is painful too. Pull down the pants and sit down and again pull it up. Yeah, I'm going to get a whole other one. But then, that's, that's a culture and tradition. But at least, what our point I'm trying to make here is, when males and females stay together, if you really care for the females staying in the house, one should not pass you in the area in the pot, because it definitely spills and soils the pot, like my boss is trying to screw the female who is staying. Surgical bladder strokes, cancer, bladder cancer. Bladder cancer is very common in people who are living pains and dies. What happens is pain, die, they may not be able to wash their hands, then they be reposed in the stomach. Kidney sees a toxic substance, sends to the bladder. Now, bladder people wake it, evacuate after every Two hours, three hours. So three hours that guy is there in the bladder. Which is chemically toxic cancers. Okay. Sometimes eight hours people are in the shape. So eight hours that 
toxin is lying in the blood. So therefore, bladder cancers are common in those people who work in anything which is toxic like dyes or chemicals. Okay. So those who are dealing with chemicals have to wash their hands before they eat because that may enter the body and then go in the blood. Stomach deals with it with acid, so acid, mucus, bladder doesn't have mucus, is there? Then, for the histology, there is what epithelium in the urinary bladder and ureter? Transitional epithelium. What are the cells on the top of the transitional epithelium called? Umbrella cells. Okay. So, suppose this is the second layer, and on the top of this is the umbrella cell, right? Umbrella cells like this. Now, on, now I am just drawing one umbrella cell body. On this umbrella cells are thick and thin regions. Okay? Now this is in a expanded bladder. In a bladder which is not full, the thick regions are folded like this. So this is one umbrella cell. Huh? Thick regions are folded like this. When bladder becomes full, the thick region becomes like this. Look the cells. This is how the umbrella cells are designed to stretch themselves. The bladder only stretch up. If you don't evacuate from 200 ml, it goes to 500 ml. So the epithelium will get spoiled. So what is the arrangement? There are thick and thick regions on the wall of the umbrella cells. The thick regions fold on themselves when the bladder is empty. When bladder becomes full, this thick regions, so thick regions, why thick regions are chosen so that they are not damaged. Thin regions can get damaged. So thin regions don't get spread, it's the thick regions which get stretched. That's about the histology of the blood. Okay. Some few more minutes with us and therefore now we'll go down from bladder to the next organs. Okay, so this is the suppose the neck of the bladder and below the neck of the bladder, which organ is there? Which organ is there? Prostate. Prostate. Okay. Prostate has a base which is related to the neck of the bladder. So this is the base of the prostate which is related to the neck of the bladder. Prostate has an apex. Prostate has the apex which is related to the sphincter urethry muscle. This is related to the sphincter urethry muscle. Okay? If you look at the prostate from the side, okay, now we are looking at the prostate from the side. This is the urethra passing through the prostate and this is the uh, ejaculatory cup. That divides the prostate into anterior lobes, posterior lobes, and median lobe. Anterior lobe, posterior lobe, and median lobe. Okay? And these two are lateral lobes. This is a coronal section. A coronal section. You are getting what I am saying? In coronal section, we see the two lateral lobes, and in the side view, this is the side view. In the side view, we see the anterior lobe, posterior lobe, and median lobe. It is this median lobe which enlarges in old people. You must have heard old people, prostate or wrong And this compresses on the, this compresses on the urethra, so they cannot pass it. So don't get irritated if an old person is standing in the urethra for long, because he strains more, it compresses more. So they have, they have, they have to be actually told relax. Stand in the relaxed position. So when the relaxed medium lobe goes behind and the urine passes. So then this upper, this upper comes, bladder enlarges. We even need surgical opening. You come across one old person coming like this because he is not able to pass you. So you put the catheter and then. So then this prostate has to be operated. When the prostate has to be operated, then is a capsule of the prostate, two capsules and false capsule. Okay, suppose this is the two capsule and behind beyond that is a false capsule. And then there is a venous plexus. You come uh, across this 
philosophy when you study the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland. So there is the venous plexus like this. So this venous plexus has to be kept undisturbed and only prostate has to be removed. Only the prostate has to be removed. Why? Because if you try to remove the prostate along with the capsules, the venous plexus will burst. Prostatic venous plexus is connected to Dyson's plexus. Have you heard this word before? Vertebral venous plexus. Which other organ was connected like that? Memory gland or breast. So prostatic cancer is connected. Vertebral and uh, cancer of prostate can go via the Dyson's plexus. So just see, prostatic cancer, and person gets metastasis in the brain and not the spinal cord. Okay, right in the process. Okay. In this prostatic urethra, there is the Patient problem, 
about the ureters, we spoke about the abdominal part of the ureters, right? 